here she is. My Bugatti Chiron Pure Sport. If you're new to my channel, welcome. You should know that, uh, firstly, you're on the greatest YouTube channel in the world. Secondly, I like cars. I have 24 cars, I think. Some crazy number. Something crazy. I don't even know. I've got, and I don't do car reviews, right? All these guys, they get one car, they do car reviews. I don't do that. I have two 765 McLarens. I have an 812 super fast, 458 Italia, M5 E6, uh, S63, Lamborghini Huracan Evo, Rolls Royce Wraith, PBS, Vanquish S. I got so many cars, I can't even remember them, and I don't do reviews. I Porsches, I got like three Porsches. I did one Porsche review on this channel a while ago, complaining about the footrest. But now my, my baby's turned up, the Bugatti. And I feel like, because I'm in Dubai, I should do the first car review where a Bugatti goes to Jebel Jace which is the most famous road in Dubai, and I can see what it can really do as a sports car. So let's talk about the Bugatti I bought. I've got a copy of the invoice here all the extras I put on the car. I'm not going to tell you the price of each extra out of respect for Bugatti. I'll let them keep their price list secret. But we have a Chiron Pure Sport and I paid for a few extras. The color, brake calipers. That was a, a, a paid extra. Painted wheel was a paid extra. I've got the seat belts being colored. Yep. Paid extra. Ooh. Paid extra for that. I paid extra for the engine cover to be painted. See, it's red to match my theme of copper red and carbon. Paid extra for the external carbon pack, internal carbon pack. I paid extra for the sunroof. That was extra. So all in all, she cost me 3.3 .3 million euro plus VAT, plus delivery. <laughs> so all in all, we're looking at around 5.1, 5.2 million American dollars. So we cannot crash on Jevil Jace today. But obviously it's 1,500 horsepower, W16 engine, quad turbo, but it's heavy, right? It's a heavy car, four wheel drive. So I've been driving it for two or three days now. I feel semi comfortable and I wanna see what it could do compared to something like a 765 McLaren, which is a real animal. So welcome to the Tate speech, Chiron Pure Sport. Right, so when you first get inside of a Bugatti, I can repeat some of the things they told me when I was buying her. They deliberately keep the amount of screens to a minimum. So you'll notice there's no big infotainment system in the middle. It's all very basic. And the idea is that these cars are supposed to be a work of art and they're supposed to exist forever. And the number one thing that looks dated is technology. You look at an old screen, right, from 10 years ago, they look awful. And in 10 years from now, the current screens will look awful. And they don't want that to happen with these cars, especially as Bugatti is now working with Rimac and they're going electric or hybrid. This is the last full combustion, the biggest full combustion engine you can buy in a road car. This is the last one, the big W16. So these are going to be around forever. These are going to be a piece of history. So they didn't want to ruin that by having an old screen. Before I continue, let me do a little quick flex and notice I put my name in the headrests. That shows my intention to sell is never. I do not intend to sell this car, I intend to keep her. So, got place for the key, but it's keyless. Engine start here. There she is. And I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of the internals, how it all works or what I understand so far. Like I said, I've only had the car for two or three days. I'm not a complete expert but it's actually very, very basic. It's quite simple. Here you have climate control, heated seat, fan speed, temperature, nice and easy. Nothing too crazy. And then here you have an alternative view as well. If you hold this button, you can change it from showing climate control to showing other things. And right now, this will show on the drive, or this shows since I've had the car, the maximum amount of horsepower I've managed to put down on the ground. 1494 at one point when I had my foot down. The max kilometers per hour I've driven, max revs. These are the maxes. 
So this is just sitting you there to tempt you to try and beat it. Like, oh, I gotta get new max all the time. So that's what that's for. You can hold the button, you can switch back, you can switch back to climate control. You can actually in the settings here choose which information it shows here. But uh I mean some people care a lot more than me. Whatever. Climate control is fine for me. Gear stick, nice and easy, very simple. Left is neutral, left and down is reverse. And then you got manual, you can go up and down with the with the gear shift, just like you can with the paddles, which I like to do. I like to drive it like that. On and off for the infotainment system. And that's it. That's all your inside buttons. That's your stereo on and off. Very simple. Here on the steering wheel, you got the paddles, engine start button, your launch control button. We have to launch control, don't we? Man, we have to launch we control. We have to launch control. This controls the right screen. This controls the left screen. Very much like uh, Ferrari kind of has that, the two screens and the two uh, systems. On the left, you have car, which is some basic settings. Info, info on the car, tire pressure, tire temperature, which is obviously very important. Chronograph, different settings for the light, comfort. I'm not gonna get boring. I'm not gonna get geeky about it because you know there's better car reviewers than me. You can go see Doug if you want every little detail. Radio, media, navigation, phone, and sound. That's it, really simple. You've got your media, you've got a few settings for the car, your radio, your navigation, your sound, really simple. Here on the left, you've got your volume control up and down. You've got your rev counter on the left and you can choose if it shows the revs in, in, a, in a specific number or as a gauge. And that's it, simple. Last thing to talk about here is the different drive modes. You've got with BEB, which is like the Bugatti mode, standard mode. You've got the highway mode, which reduces some drag which is deliberately for going as fast as you can, basically in a straight line. You've got track mode, which is, I don't know if you're feeling crazy. And then you got here on the left, you can take it to the left, you've got front lift system. You can go to the left and the front will lift, and you can go to the left and go down again. This button feels very silky and very smooth. Move the button to the left. No, turn it in. That is very smooth. It's very smooth. That's super smooth. They must have done something yeah. with some very expensive ball bearings for that button, so that's cool. Besides that, yeah door windows bang it's pretty simple inside it's not a crazy complicated car there isn't much to work out there's not much to play with with the computers it's pretty simple got the lights here which at night you can see these lights and you got the, the signature chiron strip down the middle and it is what it is and then you got a big engine at the back rocket ship literally rocket ship literally a rocket ship so we're gonna go get some fuel i'm gonna try and buy a holder for my iphone so i can see where i'm going i'm gonna put that there get five Red Bulls so I'm wired, my brain's on, and then we're gonna go and test what a 2.2, 2.3 ton car with 1,500 horsepower and a, a quad turbo W16 eight liter engine can do compared to something like my 765, which is half the weight, four liter twin turbo V8. So yeah, this is double the weight, but double the engine. So it's gonna be very interesting yeah. to compare the two. So, uh, that's today's schedule. All right, so everyone's gonna ask me, how does it feel to drive? And it's very difficult for me to answer. Usually I'm good with words, right? And I've driven every single supercar you can name. But it's very strange to, to explain. When it's an automatic, to keep the car tame, relatively tame, it tears through the gears at ridiculous speeds. So when you put your foot down, it keeps the revs super low because that's so much torque. It stays around yeah. one and a half, two thousand revs. And as you accelerate, you go from first gear to sixth gear between zero and 50 miles an hour. It keeps it really, really tame. When you put it in manual, because I drive all my cars in manual, I can upshift up and down like this or with the paddles. It's not, I wouldn't say it's difficult to drive. Obviously it's scary a little bit because you don't want an incident. But as long as you keep the revs super low, it only, it only revs up to 8,000 but it's got crazy torque. But the turbos don't kick in until around 4,000. So if you drive between zero and 4,000, it's really not difficult to drive. But once you get to 4,000 and you put your foot down and you hear the turbos turn on, then it's like a plane and it takes off. But it's very hard to describe. If I had to describe it, it's kind of like a McLaren. For any of you car people out here, you know when you hit the turbo and it really kicks. It's like that, but a lot stronger, but without the grip issues, because it's four wheel drive instead of rear wheel drive. So it's just straight line like a bullet. It's uh, it's like a plane taking off. It sounds yeah, like a plane taking it does off. Sound it like feels a plane. like a plane taking off. It really feels like when I'm on the private jet and the private jet's taking off. That's what it feels like. So um, it's difficult to explain. It doesn't really feel that heavy, 
but I've yet to really try it on a corner. So we're gonna see how it can really break, how it can really corner. We're gonna go out and we're gonna push it to the limits today. But uh, I'd love to give you a more accurate description of how it feels. It just feels the truth. You're sitting on a W16, you're sitting on a big engine. <laughs> That's yeah. how it feels like. I don't know how else to explain it. You put your foot down and it launches. So we're gonna escape these speed cameras because uh, we're here in Dubai and there's a lot of them. And then I'm gonna show you. Seven gears. I haven't said that yet. Seven gears. Oh, and I have more. Don't know why, because my fucking Porsches have eight. Yeah. So seven. Seven gears. But I but if you're going full throttle in seventh gear in this car, I mean do you really need another gear? I think you're pretty much yeah, about you're, to take off. Yeah. And then one side it's got a, 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 a cap for oil, and it's got an identical cap on the other side for fuel, and I can never remember which one's which, and that's one of the problems. Let me complain, guys. When you have 26 cars, you forget where the fuel caps are. That's the first thing you're gonna forget all the time, because you're in the Ferrari, then you're in the Lambo, and you can never remember which side fuel is. So if we look stupid here filming, because I got the wrong side wrong, you're gonna have to forget me. So we're gonna find out. Hello, friend. Is that oil or fuel? I don't know. You're asking me, I don't know. So here is oil. So that must be fuel, huh? Yeah, fuel. Oil. This is oil. Fuel in there. Full. Super full. Thank you. Hot. So at least five Red Bulls now. Wait, it's, it's a W16. So we need 16 Red Bulls. Eight and eight. We don't need eight and eight Red Bulls. Have you ever done... Do you know how car reviews are done? This is standard operating procedure for car reviews. Is it? Yeah. So that's, a, that's how they're all done? They all do Red Bulls? Yeah, Red Bulls based on the engine size Correct. of their car. Correct. That would make sense. A nice standardized... System. Yeah, a nice standardized system for car reviews. So after, after this is done, then I've got another car to collect next week. I've got the GT3R, 900 horsepower Porsche, 911 Turbo S. They've upgraded it, GT3R from Tech Art, 900 BHP. So I've got... Uh, maybe I should um, review that one as well. Maybe we should just become car reviewers. Maybe I should become car reviewers. I've got more we cars could. than all the car reviewer guys anyway. You'd be very good. I've got a little reverse camera, which is nice because you can't see anything else. It's hard to see around because she's so wide. Yeah. But I have a reverse camera. Totally worth 3.2 million. Nice, good reverse camera. Nice. It is a different level though. Like obviously if you pull up on a Lambo, people are like, oh, nice Lambo. But in Dubai, nobody even cares, right? In Dubai, Lambo is whatever. But this, every hotel I've parked at, they've upgraded me for free. They're like, will you put the car out front? I'm like, yeah, sure. Yeah, security, like, yeah, we'll keep people around it, no problem here, we'll give you a suite. So I'm gonna get my millions back in three hotel suites. Nice. Nice. Maybe I should do a review of the blue Red Bull. Blue Red Bull instead? As, a, as opposed to the normal Red Bull. Maybe we should cancel all this driving that everyone's hoping to see. Just Red Bulls. Just Red Bull reviews. So how is it? Pretty good. Is it better than the normal Red Bull? Uh, I don't know about better. It's different. Different? Shit. Yeah, so we're gonna have to do a separate review video coming up, ladies and gentlemen. Get down to the bottom of it. This is gonna be the only Shiro in the world where the owner's smoking cigars, drinking Red Bull, four girls in the passenger seat, driving around. Like, I'm not, this is not gonna be a piece of art. This is a car and it's gonna be used. This is gonna be the most well enjoyed Shiro on the planet. <laughs> Playing no games. When I bought it, it gets four. I get four years warranty and four years free servicing. Ah, it's nice, isn't it? Good so, deal. So I might as well put on as many miles as I can while it's all free. So that's the plan. So we just filled up. It says I'm getting around twelve. It's around twelve liter per hundred kilometers now. I'm cruising at hundred kilometers an hour. So it's, it's saying my range is 550 kilometers on a full tank. My trip, which I don't know how to reset. Let me see if I can reset this live on air. Let's see if I know what I'm doing. Trip settings. I don't know. Right. So um, my trip is at 341 kilometers. We're going to go, we're going to hammer the car, and we're going to see how much gas we have left. Remember 341, and we'll see how many kilometers you're really getting. There's no way I'm getting 500 kilometers out of a tank. No way. No way. So we're going to see what it actually turns out to be. 
So, but when we're cruising, it's like, no, you can get 500 kilometers, yeah. da, 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 but we're not going to drive 100 kilometers for you. What, what horses are we cruising at right now? How many horsepower are we using? Yeah. That's a good question. Let me see. I can see on here somewhere. What's in here? That's revs. That's PS. Less than two. Less than 200. Less than 200 horses. Less just to chill. Horses. We're just cruising. So I can see. So we're barely using. The, we're barely using the car. So we're gonna see how many. We're gonna see how it performs because McLaren's the same. We start to push McLaren. Petrol vanishes. So we're gonna see a full tank. Hopefully we can make it there and back without dying. We're running out. We're running out of gas. Man, lost in the desert, no gas, but you got a Bugatti. That's true. Stopping Nissans on their way by, please, <laughs> please some fuel. Please some fuel. Help me. Help me. <laughs> out the way, Lexus. <laughs> Speed camera, man. We just went from, bro, the, the speedo can't even keep up. Yeah. With with the speed you're doing, like it, it showed like 160, and then by a next time it next refresh, it was 217. And by a next refresh, it's 254. Like it's just like, yep. tick, tick, it's ridiculous. We're back down to the speed limit now. I wish people could feel what that was. Because video doesn't do it justice. No, it doesn't. Like, oh, no, because they don't feel the, the don't like G forces. Like my next, ah. Yeah. You're like, ah. So we did about 60 kilometers at the speed limit, and we've used not a quarter of a tank, maybe an eighth of a tank or a sixth of a tank. And I'm paranoid about fuel because I hate when I get on a good road and then the fun ends because I haven't got fuel. So I'm going to top her up again. Plus, I've only had four Red Bulls, Luke, and I think I need a top up as well. You don't need eight Red Bulls. <laughs> I do. It's Red Bull time. Can't you see that on my Chiron Jacob & Co. $455,000, I can't remember the name of it, Torpillion something. Nowhere on there does it say. It it's, says Red Bull. It doesn't say Red Bull. It does. It Let me show you. Fast. Let me show you. I don't think it's wound up. I don't, I don't keep it wound because, you know. But I think when this happens, the Bugatti engine starts moving. That doesn't mean Red Bull time. Doesn't it? it? No, it means you press the button. Okay, well that just happened and we're about three Red Bulls. So there must be some kind of correlation. No, the, no, there can't be. There must be. We don't need more Red Bulls. We do. For anyone wondering about how you could go traveling around Europe, Monaco, all those beautiful locations in your day, this is the luggage space you get. Ah. Pretty shallow, yeah. I mean, it can barely fit my Jacob & Co box for the watch I bought and my pouch. So that. And then we have a, a book. Don't know what's in it. You know what? Most people who have Bugattis probably know. They've probably looked at every yeah. setting. They know everything. And I'm the worst reviewer. I don't know the computer works. I, I just drive it. Like, I'm not, I'm not a dork. This is something Bugatti. What's this? This is a trickle, it's a trickle nice. charger. Nice. Yeah, nice case for trickle charger. This is. Let's find out what this is live for everyone. As long as it's not too hard to. Because I can't be bothered. Some kind of tire thing? Must yeah, be. Yeah, some kind of tire, fix the things. car thing. But it's in a nice velvet pouch with a nice strap. It is very really nice and velvet. And then we have our strap, we have our emblem here, the Gatti Automobiles, Molsheim, France. Edition Limite, Limite? Don't know how to phrase yeah. One of 60, Mr. Tate. That is G. That is G. Is it extra to get it in red? I don't know. Everything else in red costs extra. It's that true. That costs extra. I don't know. Every single bit of red on this car costs extra. Back in the game. Back in the game. Sir? Keep it. <laughs> it's also the braking, man. When you slow back down. Yeah, it's crazy. You can hear, you can hear the turbos. Like, yeah. You can hear the, the whistling. Listen. It's literally like a jet. It's like a jet. Yeah, it's crazy. Four quad turbo. I can actually see here my turbo pressure and bar. I can see here yeah. my info system. It shows me the amount of pressure in my turbos and bar. But um, I'm focusing on the road. Yeah, yeah. Anyone who's driving this and worried about their turbo pressure is going to... Yep. So 
we're going to keep our eyes on the road, but there's a lot of information you don't need because you're going too fast. But I'm going to see that this is all about the corners. I'm a guy who likes to drive on corners anyway. I don't really like straight line speed. I don't, I don't see the point in yeah. 300 miles an hour. I don't find it interesting. That seems like pointless risk for me. I'm all about the mountain roads. I live in Romania. I'm all about the mountain roads in Romania. So that's what I'm most interested in is what this car can do on the, on the bends. So that's where we're going to see what it's going. So we've topped up again. We're at 400 kilometers. I'm saying this on camera so we can track how much we got out of this tank of fuel. When I start hammering it, we're at 400 kilometers on the trip. Full tank of fuel, completely topped up to the absolute top, top, top. And we're about to hit the road and we're about to hammer it. So we're going to see what we get out. This is the beginning. This is it. It's a little bit bumpy for a while, so I'll go a little bit slow. Once we're on the road. Once we're on, then it's on. Once we're on, then it's on. Then it's on. This video will probably go a lot more viral if I wrecked, but I'm a professional. I don't crash. I've never crashed in my life. I'm certainly not crashing this car. So of a nice fun little drive but i remember some bumps some stones in the road last time i did this road i was in a pista maybe and i remember there, there's gonna be some debris so i don't want to destroy the outer carbon pack that cost me untold sums so i'm gonna chill a little bit until we're on the perfect tarmac so this road goes to perfect tarmac yeah perfect tarmac. nice Don't feel that acceleration. They can't appreciate They don't they can't appreciate it. You never can on video, it's always like yeah. that's not fast. So yeah, like it's four-wheel drive. It's hard to explain how it feels to drive this car. Like a McLaren feels like a fighter jet, right? It's like a jet and it complies instantly. This feels a bit more like an attack helicopter. Like if you were to tell a hel if you were to if you were to tell a jet to to turn full, it would just go. Swoosh. Whereas a helicopter would be, you'd tell it, and it'd be a tiny delay, and then it would, swoosh, and it would do a very good job. It's almost kind of like because of the weight, it needs a fraction of a second to deal with its own weight, and then somehow it pins itself to the ground and, and complies. It's hard to explain. It's because it's, it's a heavy car. It's a really heavy car. But man, it straight just yeah. disappear. It's just, it, when you drive this car, it's all corners. It's just corner, a straight which vanishes, doesn't exist anymore, and then you're on the next corner. As soon as you put your foot down, it's just like, next corner's Gone. come up. We're gonna see how well it breaks. Well, the brakes do feel good so far. It's got really big discs. We're gonna see how well it deals with the weight. Because that's where you really feel the weight on a car, the braking. So once we get on the perfect tarmac, we're gonna see. Hard right coming up in 500 meters. My only real concern now is a goat yeah. or a fucking animals. Yeah, a goat or a fucking stone. That's gonna rip the front. This is the hard, hard right. Zero percent. 
He knows no one wants to hit him, especially when he sees the Bugatti. He knows the Bugatti super doesn't care to hit him. Yeah, you don't want to kill him. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a plane. It literally is. I was going to say, it's it, uh, man, it might be the fastest car because it's like it goes to that point where we're kind of used to, but then it went more. Yeah. yeah. Like that's when it was like, wait. Yeah. This goes bang. Yeah. Jesus. Bro, it's crazy. <laughs> crazy fast. Once you hear that whoosh of the turbos, yeah. you have to, I have to hold the steering wheel tighter. Like, I don't want to take <laughs> off. About to launch. No more goats, I hope. <laughs> yeah, that goat would be gone. acceleration forever yeah so it, it really does increase the braking distance massively because you don't realize you're going so much quicker than you would be in let's say a Lamborghini you put your foot down in Lambo you driven a Lambo long enough you kind of know what speed you get up to because it is an arm yeah. yeah you just don't you look down and go fuck I'm going that fast it's crazy so I'm, I'm over braking to make sure I have yep. time because every single time I'm coming up to a quarter I'm going quicker than I expect myself to be going Like, we really know where the 
Yeah, we'd, we'd have to super know the roads. Like a Lambo grip. wants you to keep just pressing it because it's right about to start within the corners there. Yeah. Yeah, literally. They just wake up and just ready to okay. But no, there's a it's a, it's a corner. See just there it wants to start right when you need to end. Yeah it's like it's over hundred miles an hour is where most of the power comes in. Yeah. It's weird. Like you have to be going so fast to really feel the power of the car. It's gonna be a super sharp turn up ahead.
literally sounds like a plane. Like a plane when it's just trying to take, it's literally trying to take off. Yeah. That's what it is. It's like, trying to take off. Like it's literally yeah. Flying. Yeah, it wants the most power at like 100, 120, 150. Yeah. Like just like a plane. Yeah. That's when you need to lift off. Yeah. That's why they have runways. This car needs a runway. Five was a monster. It's not. 765. Yeah, it's like you say. It's like a fighter jet. And like it's nimble and ready right, to right, right, accelerate. This one's like a monster. Yeah, it's like you're, 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 you're literally you're guiding a monster up the road. Yeah. By force. <laughs> pure force. Right, yeah, literally. It, they call it pure sport. It should be pure force. Yeah. You're like riding, you're forcing a monster up the road. It wants to go faster. It wants to kill you. It wants to go at the insane speeds that we just can't give it. Yeah. Yeah, literally. Is that it? And there, when you doubt him, it's like it's angry. Like, yeah. girl, why didn't you let me keep going? Like, <laughs> there's just not enough road for it. Oh, we're gonna stop in a second. Tires are trying to relax. Yeah. I don't know how the tires deal with it. Bro, it's impressive. All the automotive. Yeah. Because we're really forcing these tires to really hold some serious weight. Yeah, serious weight. Like, like, I feel like I just had a fight. Yeah. My arms are tired. Uh, bro, mine are super <laughs> tired. I mean... <laughs> uh, uh. Oh, you can smell it. it. Smells like pure tire, pure rubber. Man, smoke it. It's literally smoking. I don't know how these tires do it. Because this thing's much, much heavier. I really don't know how these tires put up with it. If the thing wants to go faster, it really does. It just wants to, it just, it wants us dead. You can hear it, it's just trying to cool down. Slow down a bit now. Too much adrenaline, Luke. Too much adrenaline. Might be eight Red Bulls. Bro, it might, maybe it's eight Red Bulls. Going fast in a sports car is adrenaline. Going fast in your $5.2 million car. Man. Bro, you, you, there's no room for error. And this car wants to go. It really wants to kill us. It wants to go so much quicker. It does. I, I could have pushed it. There's yep. a lot more I could have done. But for, uh, it's really it's a safety first kind of car. Yeah. It, it, I think no matter who has one of these, no matter how rich you are, because it'd be so hard to replace, you're always going to enjoy it well within its limits yep. of what it can actually do. 
but all in all, it is a sports car. It is a sports car. You could definitely take this out and race it. Yeah, it's heavy, but you forgive it because when you when the turbos kick in, it certainly doesn't feel heavy. So it's just a matter of if I had to race myself in, in my 765 against myself in this, it would all be about the track, depending on how many straights we have. The more straights we have, the better for the machine. Oh, man. It's going to fucking eat vanish. The it's going to vanish. But there's enough just pure windy bends. But then all in all, it didn't. I didn't feel like I had grip or weight problems. When I was transferring from a left to a right quickly, like a chicane, then you'd feel the weight because it has to do something. Whatever it's doing to deal with the weight, once you go into the corner, it just starts to grip and it just holds it. Really impressive. It was really impressive. I'm impressed. So let's have a nice, safe drive home. Three more Red Bulls. And then, um... Wait, why do we need the Red Bulls? And then... I have to decide if I'm going to launch control for the people at home. We should probably do a launch control. Yeah. First, we need more Red Bull. Okay. So Red Bull, then launch control. Now the Red Bull makes sense. Yeah, that's the plan. Fuel, it's actually better than a McLaren. Because right? I was pushing it. I did just over 52 kilometers, and I used about a quarter of a tank. That means if you're really pushing it, you get 150 to 160 kilometers out of it. That's better than my 765. That's super impressive. That's impressive. The 765, if you start pushing it, your tank just vanishes at 50k, 60k. So yeah, it didn't use nearly as much fuel as I expected it to. That's huh. actually pretty impressive. That's, that's good. super that's impressive. Good yeah. Good old VW. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's, it's made by the same people who are making Porsches, so they, they, they kept their efficiency there. So you can go completely across Europe in this thing. You could, You'll yeah. have no gas problems at all. Yeah, you can easily do it. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty impressive. That is very impressive. Except you have no luggage space. That is true. But then you, you have a, like, if you drive this, you have, like, a peasant. Yeah, car. yeah, yeah. So a your Range luggage Rover, beats you. A Range Rover or some peasant yeah. would have to meet you at each hotel and yeah. unpack. You know, then you'd live that life. But here's my room. When I get to my room, I want my things unpacked and hung up. By send this your, time. Send your four members of staff in a yeah. Range Rover. Peasants, the peons. Yeah, you know, true. You're, you're, you're royalty in this car. Yeah, you don't carry your own bags. Yeah, of course. Not. Why would you have your own bags in your own car? Yeah, like we need, when you turn up at the hotel, your closet's filled with your stuff. Exactly. Exactly. You make them completely unpack and completely repack, fully in closets every day, just because they're your staff and you're rich. We have so much to do. We gotta do this shit. We're gonna do an awesome European road trip this summer in this car and live as pompously as possible. The like, pompous trip. The pompous trip. Like, I want this particular newspaper every morning that I don't read. This type of coffee from this rainforest. <laughs> Dumb shit. This A certain tea. type this of cream. Yes, Mr. T. <laughs> Anything you want, Mr. T. We just laugh about it and talk about how we'd really rather have a go. Because we're from the street. And, like, I'm like everyone else who has this, these cars. We made all the money ourselves and we're 0% pompous dickheads. 0%. 0%. We're going to do that anyway. Feels very mechanical in regards to like a McLaren or a new Rari or a new Lambo. It feels electronic. It feels like you, you press something or you hit the gear shift and the computer does something and then the car complies. This still feels very mechanical. It feels like if I pull this to go up or down a gear, a lever moves a lever, which moves a piece of metal, which moves a cog. Like, can you? I don't even hear this. Like, that. Yeah, like yeah, you can leave feeling. Yeah, yeah. Everything feels very mechanical. Same with the steering. It doesn't feel like there's any kind of electronic assist. I don't know if there is. It feels very much like I move the wheel and it moves the wheels. Yeah, yeah, I get what you mean. It feels mechanical. It yeah. feels like it's a machine. Almost like if you were to drive a tractor. A tractor. I know this is a bad thing to say about a car. It's not a bad way. Please, I'm trying to explain. If you drive a tractor, it feels like a machine you're controlling. Yeah. This feels like a machine. It doesn't feel like a, a, a Lamborghini or a new McLaren can almost make you feel like you're in a video game and it's all electric. Yeah. It's, it's very mechanical. You're right. Everything's very mechanical. I it is understand. very, very cool.